The Legend of Ario Manac. In the fertile land of Madura, there lived a young man named Ario Manac. He had a strong and handsome appearance, his body muscular from hard work. In addition to his physical strength, Ario Manac also loved to go on adventures. The lush trees and the sounds of the forest animals provided an exciting adventure for him. Whenever he had the chance, he would explore the forest. He had already explored numerous forests, but it never diminished his interest in adventure. I want to gain as much experience as possible, was his usual response whenever asked about his hobby. As usual, that day Ario Manac was exploring the wilderness. The forest was quite dense, but there was not a hint of fear on Ario Manac's face. On the contrary, he seemed to be thoroughly enjoying his adventure. Before he knew it, night began to fall, and darkness began to envelop the forest. In the distance, the sounds of nocturnal animals started to be heard, but Ario Manac was not afraid. He kept walking between the dense trees, especially as it was a beautiful full moon that night. The moonlight illuminated the dark night. As he walked, Ario Manac couldn't stop admiring the beauty of nature. Hmm, the night view is so beautiful. He murmured. Feeling tired, Ario Manac decided to take a rest. He sat down under a tree, where he could gaze at the moon. As he was enjoying the beauty of the moon, he suddenly heard the laughter of several women. They seemed to be having a lively conversation. Ario Manac was momentarily stunned. He listened carefully. Indeed, the laughter was getting louder, drowning out the sounds of the forest animals. Instead of being afraid, Ario Manac became even more curious. He then approached the source of the laughter, carefully creeping towards it. Without much difficulty, he managed to get close to the source of the sound. It turned out that not far from there, there was a pond with clear water reflecting the moonlight. That was where the laughter was coming from, and as he got closer, the voices became clearer. Ario Manac watched as the angels enjoyed their bath and playful. They playfully splashed water at each other, clearly enjoying the serene setting of the pond. The water in this pond is so refreshing. One of the angel s remarked. Indeed, especially with the full moon shining so beautifully. It's truly an extraordinary sight. Another one responded. It's a shame we can't enjoy it every night. Remarked an angel standing by the pond. Let's just savor the atmosphere today. Another angel added. Engrossed in their activities, the angels didn't notice Ario Manac's presence. He hid behind a large tree, captivated by the beauty of the angels. A desire arose in him to possess one of them. Quietly, he approached the edge of the pond and swiftly snatched a shawl belonging to one of the angels. Shortly after, the angels finished bathing and hurried to retrieve their clothes and shawls. However, one of them appeared to be distressed. It seemed she couldn't find her shawl. With a hint of sadness, she said, How will I return to the celestial realm? My shawl is missing. Didn't you remember where you put it? One of the angels asked. Without that shawl, it's impossible to return to the celestial realm. Another angel added. Together, they searched for the missing shawl, but it was nowhere to be found. While they couldn't stay for too long, as they needed to return to the angel before dawn to avoid being discovered by humans, the sun was beginning to show its light. With heavy hearts, they reluctantly left their companion. 
One by one, they flew back to the celestial realm. Now, only one angel remained, visibly distraught and weeping. Witnessing her sorrow, Ariomanak gathered the courage to approach. He pretended not to be aware of what had happened. Carefully, he spoke. Oh angel, why are you so sad? The angel was taken aback. She had not noticed Ariomanak's arrival at all. Her beautiful face turned red, and tears streamed down her cheeks, though she still looked elegant. My shawl is missing. I can't return to the celestial realm. She responded mournfully. Be patient. Perhaps it is the divine will that you should stay on earth. Ariel Manak comforted her. The angel did not answer, only sobs were heard. I am Ariel Manak. Who are you, O oh beautiful angel? The young man asked gently. I am Dewi Tunjung Wulan. What if you stay at my house? It's not safe for you to stay here. There are many dangerous forest animals. I'm afraid you will be preyed upon by them. Without any other choice, Dewey Tunjung Wulan agreed. Even when Ario Manak proposed to her, she accepted. They eventually got married and were blessed with a son. After marriage, Ario Manak's life became more prosperous. His fields expanded and his harvests were always satisfactory. The rice was stored in the rice barn. Strangely, the barn's contents never decreased. All of this happened because Dewey Tunjung Wulan possessed mystical powers. She could cook a pot of rice from just one grain. This secret was never known by her husband, Ariel Manak. However, the unchanging contents of the barn left Ariel Manak curious. Very strange, the contents of the barn never decrease but my wife cooks rice every day. He murmured in astonishment. Driven by his curiosity, Ariel Manak tried to find out the truth. Yet his efforts were always in vain. Until one day, Dewey Tunjung Wulan went to wash clothes. Honey, I will wash at the river. While I'm gone, never go to the kitchen. Because I'm cooking rice. She instructed before leaving. All right. Ariel Manak replied. Ariel Manak was puzzled by his wife's message. He quickly headed to the kitchen. Goodness. He was startled to see a pot containing only one grain of rice. No wonder the rice in the barn never runs out. He thought to himself. Satisfied with his discovery, Ario Manak hurriedly left the kitchen. Not long after, Dewey Tunjung Wulan returned from the river. She rushed to the kitchen. How surprised she was to find that the rice she had cooked had not turned into rice. This was not what usually happened. Now she knew that her warning had been disobeyed. Her mystical power had vanished. From that moment on, Dewey Tunjung Wulan had to work hard. Every day, she pounded rice and cooked it. Over time, the rice supply began to dwindle. Meanwhile, the harvest season had not yet arrived. Oh, the rice supply is running low, and the harvest is still far away. She murmured softly. Nevertheless, Dewey Tunjung Wulan could not do anything about it. She could only carry out her work patiently. One day, as usual, Dewey Tunjung Wulan went to retrieve rice from the barn. With the supply running low, the bottom of the barn began to show. Suddenly, she saw something sticking out among the heap of rice. Curiously, Dewey Tunjung Wulan approached the object. I think I recognize this object. She said to herself. 
Without hesitation, she took the object. It turned out to be her scarf. How joyful Dewey Tunjung Wulan was. She took hold of her scarf. So all this time it was my husband who stole my scarf. Thought Dewey Tunjung Wulan. Quickly, she changed her clothes. Then she approached Ariel Manak who was playing with their son. Honey, I have found what I was looking for. Now I will return to the celestial realm. She said softly. Ariel Manak was surprised to see his wife's appearance. Dewey looked beautiful in her outfit. He realized that her scarf had been found. He pleaded with Dewey Tunjung Wulan to reconsider. Don't go. Have mercy on our child. He implored, tears streaming down his face. Hearing Ariel Manak's words, Dewey Tunjung Wulan remained firm. She stuck to her decision to return to the celestial realm. Take good care of our child, she instructed as she prepared to leave. Dewey, what if we miss you? Asked Ariel Manak. Take him outside and gaze at the moon. I will comfort him from there. Replied Dewey Tunjung Wulan as she flew back to the celestial realm. Ariel Manak was deeply shocked to see his wife's appearance. Dewey looked beautiful in her outfit. He realized that her scarf had been found. He pleaded with Dewey Tunjung Wulan to reconsider. Don't go. Have mercy on our child. He implored, tears streaming down his face. Hearing Ariel Manak's words, Dewey Tunjung Wulan did not waver. She remained firm in her decision to return to the celestial realm. Take good care of our child, she instructed as she prepared to leave. Dewey, what if we miss you? Asked Ariel Manak. Take him outside and gaze at the moon. I will comfort him from there. Replied Dewey Tunjung Wulan as she flew back to the celestial realm. Ariel Manak's heart was filled with sorrow as his wife left. He deeply regretted disobeying Dewey Tunjung Wulan's warning. If only he had been able to restrain himself, this situation would not have occurred. Sadly, there was no turning back now. The damage was done. Now, Ariel Manak could only reap the consequences of his actions.